Hello, this is Chris from Tradesite.com and I'm here today to present a short introductory video on how to download, install, and set up some of the basic features of eSignal 11. Here at Tradesite, we've been using eSignal for over a decade to teach traders how to trade the markets. The newest version of the platform offers power and features that everyone from beginning to advanced traders should find useful. Sometimes getting started with something new can be the hardest part. So today, we'll show you the pieces needed to get eSignal 11 up and running and working optimally for your trading. There will also be a separate second video on how we use many advanced features of eSignal at TradeSite Daily. But today's session will include downloading and installing the product, setting up and linking charts and watch lists, customization of charts, how to add basic indicators, and more. Let's start by looking at how to download the eSignal software. You'll need a username and password for the software, and you can get this in a couple of ways. Here is the eSignal website. You can call the number at the top of the page, or you can click on the products menu and select Get Started under eSignal. There is also the advanced Get version of eSignal, which we will discuss in our second video. Choose whichever one you are interested in, and then hit Sign Up Now to give them your basic personal information and get a username and password. Note that everyone is entitled to a risk-free 30-day trial of the product to try it out. Be sure that while you are in the trial, you take the time to really play with the features and functionality, much of which we will be discussing today. Once you have a username and password, move to the Download tab and select from the 32-bit or 64-bit versions of the eSignal software based on your computer and Windows operating system. In this case, I'm using Internet Explorer. Different browsers may operate differently on this next step, but usually you can either just run the software after the download is complete, or you can save it to your hard drive in case you'll ever need to install it again. And you can see right here at the bottom of the screen, it's asking me if I want to run it or save it. Either way, once you begin to run the installation, you simply accept the various basic settings for installation and give your eSignal username and password. Let's skip ahead to the point where the file is downloaded and installation is complete. During the installation process, one option that you will be given is to choose how your windows interact with any signal. The options will be, as you can see here on the screen, docked, standard with auto size, and standard. For purposes of this tutorial, we recommend using standard so that we can place our windows independently around the screen as we show you some of the deeper features of eSignal. Here is eSignal 11 loaded on my screen with nothing yet showing. In this scenario, I have an empty page ready for whatever I want to do to it. Let's start by loading up a chart, resizing it a bit, adding a watch list that we will link to the chart to save you time right out of the gate. So to start with, we click on the new menu button and add a chart, which comes up in my default version of a black background candlestick chart. Let's resize this to fill our current screen like this and talk about some of the options on the chart and how we can get it set up to our liking. First, you'll notice that the default setting has a small data pod with a light blue background that shows the date and price, open, high, low, and close, and some other key information for wherever I put my mouse on the chart. The symbol here is the S&P, the dollar SPX, which is the S&P 500 index. You'll notice that as I move my mouse, we see a horizontal and vertical line that shows me exactly where I'm pointing, with labels at the bottom for the date and on the right for the price. There is also a grid that breaks up the times and prices into equal increments. I can slide the chart backward in time just by clicking and dragging. I can also adjust the height of the chart if needed either way by clicking in the right margin and sliding up or down as you can see here. So if I want to focus on some of the data in there, I can really zoom in or zoom out and back it up. Now, let's focus on some of the settings that you can change in the properties of a chart. We do this by right-clicking and hitting Properties at the bottom of the menu that pops up. The first options relate to the background. For example, I can change the background color of the chart you want to try something more yellow or maybe blue? I think in this case we'll go ahead and go with straight up black for now. You can turn on and off the grid lines right here 
like that, that you see on the chart itself. You also have options for turning on extra labels such as dividends and earnings and splits and more right here. The next options relate to the status line, which is the top line of the chart that tells us the symbol, description of the symbol and more. We can also change the font color and size here for that label. Next up we have scales options which determines how the right side and left side scales are measured. We will come back to this at a later time. The data window options control the blue background data pod on the chart which I referenced earlier. You can set it so that it is always on or always off like this or you can have it appear only when you select this particular chart so it doesn't take up screen space when you aren't focused on it. You can also choose some of the items that appear in the data window or select a compact mode which makes it smaller and looks like this. Next we have cursor options. Here you can turn off the horizontal, horizontal and vertical cross pointer lines that we showed previously and also the labels in the bottom and right scales if you don't want to see them. You'll see the price and time scales disappear as I turn off the cursor labels right here. I leave those on for myself. The snapshot bar can be turned on and serves as another alternative way to get quick information about the chart just like the data window. That's this blue bar that's now appeared straight across here. We will save the last two items in the list for later which is the tabular mode and the trading options. You can also click on the edit chart tab at the bottom of the properties window. Here without anything yet loaded on the chart like a study or an indicator we can simply adjust the type of chart, the color of the chart, and the, and the size of the text and color of the text on the chart itself. Here are a few types of charts that we can select from. Currently I have a candle chart showing as I mentioned before but we can switch to a standard bar chart which looks like this. We can go to a histogram chart. We can go to a line chart which simply draws a line from close to close to close. We can do an area chart which is similar to what you often see on TV news channels. We also have Kagi, point and figure. These are all specialized charts for different types of trading measurements. Renko and price break. All of these can be changed right here in the edit chart properties window. I'm going to change it back to the candlesticks. Once you have the chart the way you want it, go ahead and close the properties window. Now let's resize the chart and add a watch list to the screen. We start by resizing the chart back to fill up only a piece of our layout and then moving it to one corner of our page. We then click on the new menu option again and choose watch list from that option menu. And we're going to drag this watch list over to the side so it's not on top of the chart. Now from a watch list we're going to be able to put a series of symbols in here and then it will display the information we want it to. And we can right click on these headings and get rid of items that we don't want for example and then add items that we do by hitting add columns. So for example we have a very long and robust list here of options to put into those columns but let's start by putting the last trade price and we'll hit apply and also let's add in volume by scrolling all the way down to the bottom here's your volume number and hitting apply and then we can drag and move these columns around so if I want my last trade here my volume next and then my bid and my ask now I simply go into the symbol field and start typing symbols and so we're going to go with Apple and hit enter. Go to Google and hit enter. Note that the bid and ask fields here are not displaying anything because the market is currently not open. So what's neat about the ability to have a watch list is that it saves you a lot of time in typing down the road. If there's a lot of stocks that you use regularly or if you have a single set of stocks that you're going to use for the trading day you can put them into a watch list and when you click on them you'll notice that this chart changes to match. The reason that that happens is because they're linked. And here's what I mean by linked. 
you'll notice in the top left corner of the watch list there's a little green box and a little gray box and you'll notice the same in the top left corner of the chart window. If I click on the little green box I'll get a drop down list and I can select from any colors that I want and you'll notice that it says link to all no symbol link where I can choose from one of these colors. So if I choose a dark blue here but I have a green over here on the chart then by clicking on these symbols nothing happens on the chart but if I then change the chart to also have the dark blue it is now linked based on symbols as I click over in this window and what you'll see is now as I click on Google it changes in the chart so this makes life very simple much simpler from a trading perspective as you can sit down and add a variety of symbols whether they be stocks or futures and you can get now you can just simply click on them and pull up the data you also notice that in the chart window something we didn't discuss already is right now a daily chart we can drop down the interval and choose from 5 minute 15 minute 30 minute 60 minute 1 minute monthly weekly 65 minute and 10 minute charts or any other increment you want to fill in manually so if I switch to a 5 minute chart here Google quickly comes up with data on a 5 minute time frame if I switch to a monthly chart Google comes up with a monthly time frame I can now click on Apple in the watch list and it will show me Apple in a monthly time frame because that's the last interval that I selected and the same is true for anything else on the chart so as you can see very quick and easy now that I've set this up for me to switch between symbols without having to type them every time and you can create many watch lists if you want remember the e-signal can be spread over multiple monitors if you have them so you have as much real estate as possible to try to get as much information in front of you as you want and we're also going to talk shortly about the tabs and how they can be used to add even more data and information for you even if you don't have as much real estate as others might. Now let's resize this chart window. Let me show you one other feature of this. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. We'll leave the watch list as it is and I'm going to go to the new and chart and add a second chart. And in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this chart to approximately match the other one and put it right underneath the chart right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me two charts on the screen at once. And I now have a couple of options. I can have these set up so that they can have separate symbols in them at any given time, or I can link them based on the same color scheme I did before. So for example, I'm going to choose dark blue here on this new chart. And the top chart is a daily chart of Netflix. I'm going to also want, let's say, a weekly chart of Netflix. And now what you'll notice is, because they all have the same dark blue link in their symbol link field up there in that top left corner, as I click on the various symbols in the watch list, both of the charts are going to change at the same time. Even just understanding some of these early basic layout steps can repay you multiple times over down the road. One of the keys to trading successfully is to optimize your chart layout so that it works with you, doesn't bog you down in ways that cost you time and money. eSignal 11 is extremely powerful in many ways and the flexibility of adding charts, changing them to behave the way that you want, and linking them to watch lists is just the beginning. But even those components of the platform should not be overlooked. Now that we have a page with a couple of charts linked to a watch list, let's make sure that we don't have to redo all of these steps the next time we load the platform. I'm going to click on the eSignal menu and hit Save Page As and give this page a name such as eSignal Basic and hit Save. Now if I close the platform and reopen it, it will bring up the last saved page by default so I'm ready to go immediately. Before we proceed, let's also look at some of the other buttons at the top that help us interact with our charts. For example, from the buttons that you see, we can turn the data window on and off like this. We can also tighten or expand the ranges displayed on the charts here. This allows us to see more or less data based on the time frames that we're looking at. We can zoom in all the way like this, or we can back out all the way like this. Sometimes when you back out a lot, the charts almost become tough to see, so we can also expand or widen the candles themselves 
to suit your personal preferences. And here's the candles getting bigger and smaller, depending on how you want to see them. So keep in mind, we can back this chart out or we can zoom this in. And once we've done that, we can then widen or lessen the candles themselves based on what your preferences are. It's a pretty powerful feature. Never be afraid to right click in the eSignal platform as options related to the item that you clicked on will become available. For example, if I right click on the data window, I can choose to hide it or switch it back and forth from compact mode to regular mode. If I have adjusted the price scale of a chart and want it to come back to the automatic setting so that the chart will move up and down in the future, I can right click in the price scale on the right and select auto scale. Let's move on from here and add some indicators and lines to our charts. There are a couple of ways to add indicators or studies to a chart. First is to click on the chart itself and hit the chart menu and choose insert study. Alternatively, you can simply right click on the chart and hit insert study from the menu that pops up. This gives you a list of five tabs for studies that you can apply to your charts. The first tab is built-in studies, and these come with every version of eSignal. Let's start by adding some volume measurements to our chart. We're going to select volume from the list and hit apply, and you'll see the volume bars pop up beneath the chart itself. This is a daily chart of Apple, so each volume bar shows the volume for that particular day. You can change how much space the volume takes up on the chart simply by grabbing this line right above it, moving it up or down. So if you want volume to take up a relatively small piece of the chart and leave the actual price data for the majority of the chart, you can shrink it like this. We can also add a moving average, for example. So I'm going to double click on moving average and it automatically applies a blue moving average line to the chart, all of which can be customized simply by right clicking on the moving average and hitting the edit button, at which point a full window pops up dedicated to the features of the moving average. You can choose from a simple or exponential or weighted moving average. Decide how many periods of data you want the moving average to represent. So for example, I'm going to change it to 21. You can change the color of the moving average line itself. Say I want it to be yellow. And then we're going to go ahead and apply that by hitting close. And now I have a 21 period moving average as a yellow line here on my chart. You'll also notice a tab for advanced get studies. These are for the advanced get version of eSignal, which we will address in a later tutorial. There's also add-on studies, many of which can be purchased from third-party groups who have created their own studies for eSignal. There's also formulas, which you can add to your eSignal charts. We at TradeSite have a series of formulas that we've written in the eSignal scripting language that we allow our traders to use by simply selecting here in the list, as you can see, and hitting apply. The chart itself is now populated with what we call the Trade Site Comer study. So all of these can be written using the power of the eSignal scripting language and applied to your charts directly just like a study. Next, let's talk about a very important feature that's needed by all traders virtually, which is the ability to set a price alert for a stock or futures or forex pair so that you know when certain events are happening without having to watch the stock repeatedly on your chart. So I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to go to Manage Alerts. And you can see this alert window is currently empty, so let's go ahead and add an alert. Right here, this Add Alert window pops up. We've got Apple selected as our symbol. I'm going to choose what the condition is, and you have a long list of conditions you can set, but I'm just going to start with Last Price. And we're looking at this Apple daily chart here, and the low from yesterday was 432.77. You can see today's trading is a little higher. So let's say I want to know if it's getting down near that low, just in case it might break it, break under that support area and push lower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose at or below, and I'm going to use 433. Remember, 432.77 was the low of that day. So I want to know when it's getting down near that price. You can also choose to have it rearmed or not. If you get a percentage or incremental move back in the other direction, it will rearm the alert. Then you can choose if you want a little pop-up window to appear, you want it to play a sound for you, or you want it to send you an email. And you can do all three of these if you want when this event occurs. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Accept. And now I've got an alert here in my Manage Alerts window that shows Apple, last trade. It's currently at 438.89. And if it goes below 433, I'm going to get a signal alert. Now, 
If I want to disable that for now, I can simply hit the disable button. I can remove it completely if I'm done using that alert, or I can double click on it or hit the edit button to make any changes to it that I might want to make. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. At this point, we've talked about how to set up your and download your eSignal product, how to create a basic chart and watch list, how to link those together to make trading easier and following various symbols easier without having to manually type the symbols that you're going to view over and over again each and every day. We've talked about a lot of the customization options that you can put into your charts and where to right click to adjust different settings. We've talked about how to add alerts and indicators and studies to your chart. I think the last thing we want to talk about today in this particular video is the various toolbars that are available to you to make some of your basic commands very simple and there's a couple of different toolbars. First, there's the ones right at the top of your window itself. Right here, I'm going to click on, for example, Drawing Tools. And you'll see here, I have a variety of different tools that I can draw. Uh, every time you put your mouse over it, it'll tell you what that particular drawing tool is. Here's a pitch fan, a pitch fork. If I just want a basic trend line or a horizontal line, let's say I want to draw a line just to show me where on this chart uh, Netflix is going to uh, break that particular low that you see right there. So I can take a horizontal line, go to that particular price and click, and now I've got horizontal line drawn right there. Or if I want a trend line where I can sort of draw uh, point to point areas that I'm monitoring on the chart, I click, click on the first line there, drag it across right here and let go. Now I've got a trend line in place in the chart. So you've got a variety of drawing tools that you can use uh, quite easily. And those tools, some of them will extend off the edge of the chart and continue to draw as the chart moves forward. Others are just fixed to a certain area based on where you end the line. And you can retract that particular toolbar just by hitting the Drawing Tools button once again on the chart. Another powerful tool is Bar Replay Mode, and we'll be using this a lot in the next tutorial. This allows you to go back in time on a chart in any time frame and go bar by bar like it was a real trading day. And this is a good way to practice your trading, and we're going to show you a lot about how this is used. This is an exceptional tool that you don't see in most charting packages, and we use it a lot with our traders. Uh, then you have the toolbars that you can place across the top up here, and you can control that in the options menu by going to toolbars and clicking on the ones that you do or don't want to see. So for example, if I'm not really into Fibonacci drawings, and these are the Fibonacci tools here, I can turn off Fibonacci drawing and that particular toolbar will disappear and slide over. Um, if I'm not particularly interested in the advanced get toolbar, I can turn that off as well. The toolbars that are remaining allow me to click various time frames, for example, 1, 5, 15 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly charts. So by clicking on a chart and then clicking in the toolbar there, I can quickly change uh, the time frame of the chart. I can also do that in the chart window itself. But the neat thing about these toolbars is, based on what's more convenient for you, you can drag them around. You can put them even on the side of uh, eSignal over here if that's more convenient. So you can place them where you visually think they're going to be most useful to you. So go ahead and get used to these various toolbars. Take a look at all the features that are built into them. Figure out the ones that really are something that you're going to be using in your trading. And then decide where to place them around the eSignal chart. And with that, we're going to conclude this first training video for eSignal 11 brought to you by TradeSite.com. We're going to be offering a series of these videos that get more and more advanced into how to use the deeper features of the platform. You can find those on our website and our YouTube page. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to preview this video. We hope it helps you use this great eSignal product and will be available at any point in time to answer your questions. TradeSite has been around for more than a decade, educating people on how to trade the markets in all asset classes, including stocks, futures, forex, and options. We offer a wide variety of subscription services that will give you trading ideas every day in the market using eSignal 11, and also offer a variety of courses that will give you the material you need to be your own trader. You can contact us via our website at tradesite.com, our phone number 480-409-0910, or you can find TradeSite on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook.